Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome you to the March 5th, 2012 Morganton City Council meeting. Uh, at this, I'll call the meeting to order, and at this time, I'll ask Sheldon Stevenson to lead us with our invocation. Perhaps we can't even call it invocation anymore, right? We will. We will anyway. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to stay here, uh, standing here, I miss a face up there that ordinarily is there when I come and his name is similar to mine, but what would you do, throw him out? I mean, and feet first. <laughs> <laughs> He's first. <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to uh, uh, say that uh, many people knowing that I come from the north, you know where that is. Um, Ask me how I like living in, in, in Morganton. They really are sincere about that. And um, they're proud of their city. And, and I say to them what they all agree with. I don't know a better city in the world than, than right here in Morganton. Charlotte and I, when we were uh, looking around for a place to come, we went all around Arizona, we went all around Florida. And you know, this is the best place. So we appreciate it. Um, it's, um, uh, all the people agree with me too, too that this is probably the most wonderful, beautiful, clean, and uh, orderly city that we, in which we have to live. Um, the uh, uh, I think it's very inviting to new industry. I would think that that, that was is true. The uh, <clears throat> I had a phone call the other day um, from somebody in Ithaca who wanted to know how we treated mental patients here. And uh, so I could brag about <laughs> Broaden Hospital to people in Ithaca and what a meaningful thing that is to have in, in our community. One thing in when, I know, uh, I, when I'm talking about how wonderful a place this is to live, <clears throat> I never mentioned the fact that North Carolina beat Duke the other night. I mean, that was a tragedy, you know. You can go <laughs> ahead and mention it. <laughs> <Can I understand? laughs> Uh, um, anyway, I'm glad, grateful that the Girl Scouts are here tonight, and bringing youth into our meeting. Um, I'm also grateful for this. I don't know if you feel this way, but I'm glad that we haven't had the wild tornadoes here that they've had all around us, and uh, we've been uh, exceptional at that point. It's a wonderful thing to think of the presence of God in our presence, and. Uh, for kind of a non-denominational sort of prayer, um, may we say together the, the 23rd Psalm. We, I think we all know that. It's prayer. Let's say it prayerfully. And any, everybody can join in there if you know what it is, okay? So may we pray. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Steve, now you're on the agenda a little bit later, so you're going to have to. Somebody talked to me about that. To stay a little. They didn't bit. say I was going to get any money. That's right. I want to introduce our city council, uh, Dr. Alfred Hamer on my far right, uh, Forrest Fleming, city councilman, both of them. I'm Mel Cohen, mayor. We have Sally Sandy, city manager, Sidney Simmons, city councilman, John Cantrell, city councilman, Kelly Russell, recording secretary, and Becky Brinkley, interpreting for our deaf community. Uh, and that gives me great pleasure. I want to make a motion that we uh, we appoint as our full-time city attorney, uh, Louis Vina. Second. second. I have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Louis, we're going to stand up, and I'm going to swear you in, and we're going to have a little shuffle of the, of the chairs. <laughs> All right. Beth, you want to come up? Your family? Do I need to go down in front there, perhaps? No, I think he wants to take it up here. That's oh, all right. Okay. So we'll have plenty of room.
simply raise your left hand and put your right hand on the Bible. So the other, other way around? All right. Um, and repeat after me. I, Louis V. I, Jr., do, I, Louis, so, do solemnly swear. I, Louis V. I, Jr., do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. That I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office as city attorney of the city of Morganton. So help me God. And I will faithfully discharge the, discharge duties. the duties of my office as city attorney of the city of Morganton. So help me God. I now pronounce you city attorney for the city of Morganton. <laughs> the third city attorney that we've had in uh, 60 years, I believe. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to introduce Louis to the public. Did you get your picture, Joshua? Okay. 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 Now you leave. You're going to stay away. You're yeah. welcome to stay. Yeah. And y'all are welcome to stay too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Let me introduce the public to Louis. Um, Lou was born and raised in Valdez, North Carolina. Graduated from Valdez High School in 1972. He majored in history at the University of North Carolina and was Phi Beta Kappa and graduated in 1976. He had both sides of the game, and I don't know who he, who he supported uh, the other night, but uh, he attended Duke Law School where he received his JD in 1979. Louis has been a lawyer in several practices in Morganton, but most recently with the Starnes Law Firm. He has a long interest in municipal law and government and has been attorney for the town of Conley Springs for six years and the town of Glen Alpin for 23 years. He also served 12 years on our planning and zoning board. Lou is married to Beth Ann Miller, who was up here with him a while ago, since 1989, and they live in the Oak Hill area of Morganton with their two children, Seth, 19, and Sarah Grace, 12. Beth is an ordained Presbyterian minister and the entire family is very active at the First Presbyterian Church in Morganton, where Louie is an elder and a Sunday school teacher. And I want to welcome you on behalf of this city council uh, to this bench and uh, look forward to working with you for the years to come. And you are welcome to say anything you'd like to. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And I, I would just like to first obviously thank the, the members of the council for reposing trust in me to, uh, to undertake this duty. It's uh, it's a challenge, uh, an opportunity. I know I really look forward to, to working with all of you uh, and obviously with the, the staff, uh, many of whom I know and, and many of whom I don't know, but we'll look forward to meeting them and, and working with them and uh, hopefully uh, performing the, the duties and the, the services that, uh, that everyone requires. I know I'd also like to thank all those people uh, in the community that appar apparently uh, said a good word for me in this process of, uh, of choosing the city attorney. I know many people did, and uh, I want to say a special thanks to them um, and for those who supported me. I also fully recognize that I have some very large shoes to fill. Uh, it's a daunting prospect to think about becoming the city attorney, succeeding someone who's done that job for over 30 years. Uh, and given my age, I doubt very seriously that I put in 30 years uh, in this uh, job, but I am certainly looking forward to it, and I hope I can, uh, to some extent anyway, emulate the, the service that Steve has provided to you in, uh, in the, the, both the quality of work, the integrity, and the collegiality that, uh, that he has provided. I look forward to it. Look forward to serving Thank you, Louis. Thank Congratulations you. again on behalf of the council. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, okay. and by the way, I did pull for Carolina. I, I'm okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, we're going to um, get into the public advocacy issues and strategies, and I'm going to uh, uh, let the Girl Scouts come forward. And I guess I'll take the flag down, and we'll do it in just a second. But uh, I want to tell you, probably need to get Joshua. Can you get the flag yeah. for me? And I'm going to read the proclamation. And we will, uh, it's a long one, Girl Scout Centennial Proclamation, celebrating 100 years of Girl Scouting. Whereas March 12th, 
2012 marks the 100th anniversary of the Girl Scouts of the United States of America, which began in 1912 with Juliet Daisy Gordon Lowe, uh, gathered 18 girls in Savannah, Georgia, to provide them the opportunity to develop physically, mentally, and spiritually. And whereas for 100 years, Girl Scouting has helped build millions of girls and women of courage, confidence, and character who act to make the world a better place. And whereas the award-winning Girl Scout Leadership Program helps girls discover themselves and their values, connect with others, and take action to make the world a better place. And whereas the Girl Scouts Gold Award, the highest honor of, in Girl Scouting, requires girls to make a measurable and sustainable difference in their community and honors leadership in the Girl Scout tradition. And Gold Award recipients have already changed the world as high school students. Whereas core programs around science, technology, engineering, and math, environmental stewardship, healthy living, financial literacy, and global citizenship help girls develop a solid foundation in leadership. And whereas since its founding in, in 2000, uh, the Girl Scout Research Institute has become an internationally recognized center for original research, research views and surveys that provide significant insights into the lives of girls. And whereas through the dedication, time, and talent of thousands of volunteers of different backgrounds, abilities, and areas of expertise, the Girl Scout program is brought to more than 70,000 girls in grades K through 12 across the state of North Carolina. And whereas today, more than 50 million American women are Girl Scouts alumni, 3.3 million girls and adult volunteers are active members, and Girl Scouts is the largest member of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, a global movement comprised of more than 10 million girls in 145 countries worldwide. And now, therefore, I'm L. L. Cohen by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Morganton do hereby applaud the Girl Scouts for their 100 years of leadership and expertise as the voice and, uh, and of girls and salute them as they celebrate 100 years of Girl Scouting and proudly proclaim 2012 as the Year of the Girl. From Mel Cohen Mayor and Sally Sandy City Clerk, all in the form of a motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> All right, young ladies, uh, Joshua, you'll line us up out there. I'll go with it. Hey, Kelly, where did this go? Right, there, right by that pole. Chief, recognition of retiring public safety chaplain, Reverend Sheldon Stevenson. Mr. 
Mayor, members of the council, Madam City Manager, members of the audience and viewing audience at home and both here and at present at our council chambers, I'm here tonight to spe pay special recognition and say thank you to a chaplain, a retiring chaplain, Sheldon Stevenson, who served with public safety from 1995 until 2011. Now, we've kind of put off this event for because he's had a few other things going on and so forth, and we wanted to give Sheldon his moment. But uh, in the chaplain business, it's, uh, it's one of little, very few thank yous and a lot, a lot, not a lot of recognition, but it goes a long way in helping us as an agency, and certainly Sheldon has been with us through a lot of difficult times at public safety. He, uh, of course, retired again last year at the end of the calendar year, but we wanted to take a moment and just say thank you, and we have a little presentation for him. It certainly does not um, in any way compare nice. to the work and time that he has committed and what he has given to us as a department, but it's just a little something small, Sheldon, to say thank you, and thank we you. appreciate you. Thank you very much. To. <laughs> I know you don't have a speech in you. <laughs> you don't want to make a speech? Well, I've done the right part. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, thank you, Steve. On behalf of the city council and all the city employees, we have a, a consideration of a colon awareness month proclamation, and I'm going to read it. Proclamation re recognizing colon cancer awareness month. Colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in America. In 2012, over 150,000 lives will be taken. Over 60% can be prevented by individuals over the age of 50 with a simple colorectal screening, whereas the new health care reform requires Medicare and <coughs> private pay insurers to cover the screening at 100% of the cost for individuals ages 50 to 75. This is an excellent benefit that most individuals are not conscious of. In recognition of colon cancer awareness, the citizens of Morganton will be well informed. Whereas, Carolina Digestive Care Center is proactive in community outreach. However, we cannot educate every individual of Morganton. Bringing awareness is critical for our efforts to be successful. Citizens of Morganton must understand the significance of a screening colonoscopy. Whereas, colon cancer awareness has made great strides. However, there is much more to be done. Morganton can make a difference and become the leader in this cause. We can become the first city in North Carolina to bring awareness in the fight against colon cancer. Therefore, Carolina Digestive Care Center hereby proclaims March as Colon Cancer Awareness Month. Throughout the city of Morganton, North Carolina, the proclamation is issued in Morganton, North Carolina on this, the fifth day of March in the year 2012. Melcorn Mayor Sally Sandy, City Clerk. Uh, we have a person here. You want to come front? I'll present this to you. Don, you want to come up front? And Jason. Okay. Yeah, Jason. I uh, want to mention that we received an, uh, an award at our water plant, and we greatly appreciate the effort on uh, the behalf of the employees at the water plant. Jason is, teaches a course on it, so they, Jason is a... Uh, uh, spreading the good word. Uh, the certificate was awarded to Morganton with an annual annual turbidity, turb, turbidity level less than uh, 0 0.1 uh, NTU. Now, you know what all that means. You might want to talk about it a little bit. Uh, but we greatly appreciate the effort of, uh, of your plant, uh, Jason, and your uh, employees. North Carolina area-wide uh, program certificate of uh, facility op op 
optimization, uh, morbidity, <laughs> removal, 2010, city of Morganton water treatment facility. Yes, sir. Don, thank you. very important part of our community. What he didn't say is that was with the 18-year-old filters that we hope to award a contract to replace tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I'm not a very good speaker either, but I'm kind of on the hook for this. Uh, um, what this is, is uh, turbidity is the, the clarity of the water. Um, it it's shows that your finished product is great. And, um, you know, we, we have a lot of challenges at the plant because we are one of the few run-of-the-river facilities on the Catawba River chain. And uh, our turbidity just, it, it runs the gamut. You know, some days it'll be fairly low, three NTUs, and we've had it up as high as, what, 1,500 NTUs in the last six months. And uh, <clears throat> our operators do a really good job. Of course, you guys know that we've had a lot of turnover, a lot of retirements over the last few years. Uh, so we're doing it with young people and uh, young operators. So it's it's a challenge, but you know our guys do a good job and support you know you guys and Don and hope we get these filters taken care of. It'll be that much better. Uh, uh, but it's very important, and, uh, and we hope to continue it and get the 2011 award as well. So hopefully we'll hear something about that in the next three or four months. Maybe soon we can come take a tour of your plant, Jason. Anytime. Just yes, let sir. me know. Thank you a lot yes, for sir. all y'all's effort. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Sheldon Stevenson mentioned earlier about what's gone on in our country over the last weekend. And I just want to say that, you know, that, that our thoughts and prayers and uh, that we really do care about the five states that the tor over 100 tornadoes went through from Friday night into Saturday and uh, wiped out two towns, uh, uh, Marysville and, and Henrysville in Indiana. Uh, and a story that really touched your heart is when a little two-year-old girl, she just, they, she just died, I think, uh, overnight. Uh, but her entire family uh, were uh, taken from this earth. And I'm just uh, unmerciful what happened, 39 dead, and it may be climbing. Uh, they're still looking for survivors. But uh, just to let you know that our thoughts and prayers, and plus in North Carolina, in Cabarrus County, and in the uh, in eastern part of Mecklenburg County, had one tornado. And we already know what that's done. Uh, fortunately, there were no loss of life. Again, our thoughts and prayers are with them. Uh, Sally, anything on the Municipal Power Agency? Um, one thing, um, we received notice today that Estherine Davis who has been the chief lobbyist for Electricities for 27 years, is leaving. Um, she is going into business for herself, and they are going to be replacing her with Drew Saunders, who's been on her team. So we are losing someone that we have relied upon for a lot of years. Um, and then I have a couple of other things because you skipped right over it. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is if you've noticed um, over the last several weeks a lot of tree planting going on. We have been very fortunate. A local nursery has donated some trees to the city and we have been, those are mostly hardwoods, and we have been planting those at Catawba Meadows, at the other parks, Bethel Park, Freedom Park, and several of the other parks, maybe even something at Shuey and some of the other parks around. Um, so if you notice that, we are very grateful for the donation. Very good. And last but not least, we received news today, and it seems like we get a lot of bad news about our national statistics, but we have actually received good news. Um, our metropolitan statistical area, which is Morganton, Lenore, and Hickory, has just been ranked number nine in the nation for project announcements during the year of 2011 for communities in our population group. And that is for MSAs that have between 200,000 to a million population. And we tied actually with Shreveport and um, we are number nine as attracting the most new announcements in 2011. So that's a step in the right direction. It is, very much so. And we are very excited about that. Consent agenda, Sally. 
The consent agenda before you tonight actually includes four individual items. <coughs> Those items would be considered by you in one motion unless someone would like to have an item removed and discussed separately. For those of you viewing at home, the items include a lot of minutes, um, minutes from the regular February 6th meeting, the City Council workshop on January the 27th, and seven sets of closed session minutes that were involved in the hiring of the city attorney. We have tax releases in the amount of $62.17. We have consideration of an ordinance that establishes a speed limit on one of the state highways. We are concurring with DOT, and that refers to the portion of East Union Street between Chestnut and White, establishing that speed limit at 25 miles an hour and then the approval of the 2012 downtown calendar of events. Making form of a motion. I have a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, uh, appearances. Anyone in the audience like to come before the Morganton City Council doesn't have anything else on the agenda later. Seeing no one, moving on to a public hearing. I'll open up first to consider rezoning the rear portion of a 3.87 acre parcel located at 1331 North Green Street from Residential Transition to General Business, submitted by Dwight Ferry. Sally. Mm -hmm. um, this property is located along North Carolina Highway 181. It's actually in what we refer to as the ETJ, which is the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the city. The front half of this property was rezoned to general business back in the 1990s, and it's been utilized for boat sales. Um, the rear portion, remained in a residential transition rezone, a zoned area during that time, and over the years has been used for boat storage. Um, in order to eliminate that discrepancy, the owner has requested that general business zoning be used for the whole portion of the property. The Planning Commission um, recommended approval of this. There was a public hearing advertisement in the News Herald, uh, February 24th and March 2nd. The adjoining property owners were notified by first class mail and the property has been posted. Okay. Public hearing is open. Anyone wishing to speak for or against? Stand, state your name and where you reside. Close the public hearing. Council? Make the motion to adopt an ordinance rezoning the rear portion of a 3.87 acre parcel located at 1331 North Green Street, the residential transition to general business. Second. We have a motion, have a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. A consideration of award of bids for the water plant improvement, Sally. Um, we just heard at the award that our fellows have achieved in operating the water plant. As we talked about, the filter system out there is about 18 years old and in need of some repairs and upgrade. Um, we did several years ago, you approved, and, and we had done a master plan that lays out for us basically 20 years, 20 to 25 years worth of improvements at the city's water plant and within the water distribution system. This is one of those. Um, back in August, you approved an engineering contract, and that was with Willis Engineering. And since that time, we have put together the specifications. We have um, gone through the bidding process. You budgeted $1.8 million for this project in the year 2011-2012 budget. Um, that is to be financed with an installment purchase borrowing that the Local Government Commission would have to approve. And we certainly are ready to go through that process. Um, received quite a few bids. I think that it was a competitive process. Um, we received 10 bids, and seven of those bids were for amounts that were less than the budgeted amount. Um, like in most bidding processes, we had some exceptions. Some of those were minor in some of the bids, and some of those were more significant. Um, minor irregularities can be waived and not influence you not being able to award a contract to someone. Um, this is a formal bid, and so it requires by state law that a valid bid bond be included in the proposal and that be for the amount of 5% of the total bid. Um, 
we would recommend that you consider awarding to actually the second lowest bid that we received and that we believe is for the lowest responsible bidder because that bid which was submitted by Gilbert Engineering included only minor exceptions that we believe meet the statutory requirements to be waived and we would ask that you consider awarding this in the amount of one million five hundred and eight thousand dollars to Gilbert Engineering and our engineer is here tonight if we have any questions Well, your wishes, Council. I'll make the motion to award the bid for the water plant improvement project to Gilbert Engineering Company, Statesville, North Carolina, in the amount of $1,508,000, and to waive any minor irregularities containing, contained in the bill, and to authorize the mayor and our city manager to execute and issue all contract documents in connection with the project. Second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, the next item is uh, a slight uh, mistake. It will be a mayoral appointment. I want to appoint Cecilia Surratt, uh, 306 White Street, to the uh, Human Relations Commission. And Sally, we have one more item. We do have one item, and that was laid before <coughs> you. Um, tonight for your consideration um, with the Morgan and Heights project what we commonly refer to as the Walmart project and the work that is going on over there there is an existing 8 inch sewer line that is at the creek crossing and there is an upgrade and repair that needs to happen to that sewer line as a result of the project in order to safeguard the Henry Don branch and there an existing manhole needs adjustment there's several things that need to happen in relation to that um, the staff took informal bids and received three proposals last Friday the lowest responsive bidder was Max Presswood of Lenore and they have done work for us in the past in the amount of seventeen thousand eight hundred dollars this is a project that will be paid for by the developers of the project so you have two considerations before you tonight number one is um, the motion to authorize and execute the contract and then number two a budget amendment and what we are requiring because there could be some contingency as we get into it is that the contractor place with us hundred and ten percent of the funds and that would be nineteen thousand five hundred and eighty dollars and so your budget amendment is for that obviously if we don't spend the contingency when the project is completed we would then give that back to them. Two, mo <coughs> two motions <coughs> Motion to authorize and contract with Max Presswood <coughs> Wood and Sewer Incorporated to repair the sewer line at the creek crossing for the Morgan Heights project in Morgan. Second. We have a motion, second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion move, to go ahead. I move to approve a uh, budget amendment for uh, $19,580 for sewer line repair work at the Morgan Heights. Second. second. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion of that? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, opposed? No. All right. Uh, anything from any of the council members? It's been a good night. <laughs> Take, we've, taken on, we've taken on a, uh, a new city attorney, and um, I just uh, want to wish you well. Look forward to working with you. Definitely. If there's anything we can do, you call us. Okay. Anything you want <laughs> and, to yeah. and the other, likewise, yeah. uh, any of the members, uh, I look forward to getting to, to working with everyone. Forrest, Alfred, John, Sydney. Okay. Meeting adjourned.